Hello and welcome home, <laughs> to my home, uh, for another Sunday Bake Along. It has been a little while, so thank you for your patience. Um, and thank you also to everyone who joined me for the Heimberg Bake Along, which went really well. Um, you guys knocked it out of the park again. And I'll be shouting out some of you later um, from your Instagram pictures. So please do tune in and stay tuned for that uh, to see if your name gets called out. Meanwhile, hopefully you all have already seen on Instagram the uh, recipe list and you've got all your ingredients ready um, and you'll know that today's recipe is for Black Forest Gatto, which is an absolute classic. So if you haven't got your ingredients ready yet, pause the video now, go and get all your bits and bobs and come back. But if you're ready to go, let's get on with it. So what is a Black Forest Gatto? Well, presumably a lot of you know already because you've asked me to make this loads of times over the years. Uh, but it is a German cake which consists of a light chocolate sponge and it's filled with cherries and usually whipped cream, stabilised whipped cream. And it's the, the sponge itself is kind of dredged with a syrup that has kirsch in it. And kirsch is a cherry liqueur um, and it's super strong. So don't worry if you don't want to use that alcoholic beverage in your cake, I will give you some alternatives when we get around to that bit. But it's a really tasty cake and it's an absolute classic. I remember having this cake at parties when I was a kid back in the 80s. I feel like everyone's had this cake. So now you're gonna get to uh, make your own. So this is great. Um, there's a few differences with this cake though, with my version of it. Um, the main one being that the filling I'm going to be putting in today is not going to be uh, the normal filling, but I will explain a bit more about that when I get around to it too. But for now, we are going to get on with making the sponge. Uh, now this sponge is a really light sponge. Um, it's kind of a bit like a chiffon cake. So that is a cake which you make using separated eggs. And if you don't know how to separate eggs yet, <laughs> then you can go and check out our Tuesday video from a while back where Dane showed you all the different ways of how to separate eggs. So go and check that out because we're gonna be separating five eggs and you don't wanna be, you know, making a mess. So let's do that first. So I've got five large free range eggs which I need to separate yolks and whites. <laughs> So as you will know if you have watched Dane's video on how to separate eggs, um, it is really important uh, to avoid getting yolk in your egg whites if you are going to be whipping those up. So for example, if you're making meringues or a chiffon cake like we are today, um, because any fat that gets into the white, and, and yolk is a fat, technically, um, will prevent it from whipping up. So definitely don't do that. And the way to avoid it is by doing one egg at a time into a bowl. So that's why I've got this bowl here and I'm separating everything into that first before I put it into the big mother bowl. So that's all the egg whites separated. I'm gonna put the egg whites to one side because we won't do anything with them just yet. But we're going to measure all of our wet ingredients together and mix them up. So as well as the five egg yolks, I'm going to put 90 milliliters of vegetable oil and 150 milliliters of water. And lastly, a teaspoon of good quality vanilla extract or if you want to just use a pod, you, ooh, you may and then give that a really good whisk. Hey, that looks pretty mixed. It's gone a little bit frothy, but don't worry about that. And now we're going to sift our dry ingredients directly over the top of that, just because it stays bold. Um, so I've got 280 grams of caster sugar, and I've got 40 grams of cocoa powder as well. And I've got 225 grams of plain flour, it out. And then lastly, three quarters of a teaspoon each of bicarbonate of soda and salt. And then just shuffle that through. And then just mix that through with the whisk.
All right, so when your batter is lump free, it is ready to just kind of hang back and wait for its egg white moment because now we are going to whisk the egg whites and we're going to whisk them to stiff peaks. So you can do that with one of these little uh, hand guys or you can cheat like I'm going to with one of these. Whee! So while I'm whisking my eggs, perhaps I'd better tell you who made the cut from last time's uh, Bake Along and the Instagram because some of the cakes that were on there were amazeable. But in particular, I really enjoyed Marcy Bakes' one, uh, Giggle Foxes, Lulu Cupcakes, Lazy Pandas, and Julie Stevens, all of whom made really, really good looking honey bear cakes. So well done to all of you. And if you are baking along today, make sure you take a picture and use the hashtag Cupcake Gemma Bake so that I can see it and maybe you'll get shouted out next time. If you've never done this before with your egg whites, if you've never made meringues, I don't know how that's happened, but some people might not have made them, um, then saying stiff peaks might not really mean anything to you. But what I'm looking for is um, when you take the machine out and the peak that you make when you take it out stays stiff upright. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but at the moment we're at soft peak, so that's where the peak is kind of flopping straight away. So I've got a little way to go. Um, but it doesn't take a massive amount of time. Um, and it's really satisfying, actually. But this is where all the air from the, for the cake is coming from. All right, let's check that. Not quite. OK, that is pretty stiff, if you ask me. So this is ready to fold into the rest of your cake batter. So in order to do that with minimal uh, damage to the egg whites, what you want to do is put a small amount of the egg whites in first and just kind of mix that around. And what that does is it helps to loosen up the rest of the batter, which is quite sticky um, and can sometimes be quite difficult to kind of be gentle with because it is quite sticky. Um, and we, we use the same principle when we make macarons. And if you haven't seen the macaron masterclass that I did with Dane, then you should definitely check that out because this is a classic example of, of folding. Um, and if you're not sure how to do it, then that video covers it extensively. So now, once you've mixed in that first little blob of egg white and it's looking a lot sort of looser, you can then go ahead and put either the rest of it in one fell swoop or you can do it in two stages if you prefer, whichever you like the most. I'm just gonna go for it with all of it, guys. And then I'm using a metal spoon, like a large metal spoon. You can use a spatula too, but I think the metal spoon really does have the edge in this case. And I'm going to fold it through. So what that means is I'm gently kind of cutting through the middle and swerping around the outsides. Um, it does take a little bit of patience because it's a gentle procedure. You don't want to rush it, um, but it, it's really satisfying. And that's just basically folding the egg whites in with, without allowing all the bubbles that you've just whizzed in to flop about. You know, you're gonna, you want to keep as much air in as possible. Now, the reason we're using a chiffon style uh, recipe for this chocolate cake today is because the Black Forest Ghetto, while it is mega decadent and rich, it is actually still quite light. And as I said, traditionally, it's usually filled with a whipped cream. And whipped cream, um, especially when it's not stabilised with, with, with the gelatin that's traditionally used, um, it, it doesn't weigh very much. So if you've got a heavy sponge and whipped cream, it's just going to kind of weigh it all down and all the cream and filling is going to like smush out of the sides. So this is not only a cake that is light in sort of texture and, and flavour, it's also light in weight. <laughs> um, so if you have decided to use a whipped cream filling, which is absolutely your preference if you wish to do that, um, this will be a, a nice light cake so it's not going to kind of smush all over the shop. So you might find that you have a couple of little nuggets of, uh, well, tiny clouds of uh, egg whites. Just persevere until they're all smoothed in just still being really gentle. Uh, I feel like I've reached that point now where it's all smooth. So I am making a three layer, seven inch cake. Um, so I've already prepared my seven inch tins um, and I have just greased them. You can line them with paper if you want to as well. And I'm going to just pour my batter in as evenly as possible. So even out 
all your batter um, and don't waste any, for goodness sake, make sure you've got a rubber spatula to hand because you don't want to waste any of this stuff. I reckon that's pretty even. So these now need to be baked at 170 degrees C for about 22 to 25 minutes. Um, you want to check them with a skewer after they've cooked. Um, and obviously if it comes out wet, then put them back in for a minute or two. And I would like you to pause the video now and come back when they've cooked and I had 15 minutes cooling down. See you then. Welcome back everyone. Now hopefully you too will be sitting in front of three chubby little springy chocolate cakes, um, as am I. And what we want to do is we want to soak these with a special syrup, which I'll show you how to make in a minute. But first, I'm just going to level them off because they're, 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 they do look very pretty, but they're not going to be very easy to stack if they're rounded like this. So I'm just going to level them off with my bread knife. Now, if you want to do this with a cake leveller, by all means, go ahead. I'm just kind of winging it a little bit. Um, and I'm not taking much off. I'm just taking the kind of hump <laughs> of the cake off just so that it's a little bit easier and neater. Um, and I've done lots of videos on like how to sort of level and split and fill and crumb coat cake, so make sure you check all of my back catalogue out. But I think these are looking, I mean, they, they don't look that level, but I assure you that they are. So, they're still a little bit warm, which is just right, because when we put syrup on, I think when it's warmer, it does absorb it a lot better. So, the syrup that I'm going to be putting on is going to be a mixture of kish, which is one of the traditional ingredients in a Black Forest cake, um, and it's the um, cherry liqueur, which I mentioned earlier. But I'm also boosting the cherry flavour with some cherry syrup. Cherries are not very commonly found in Great Britain. Um, we do have cherries growing here, but they're just not enough of them to really uh, you know, have an abundance. Um, so quite often you'll find that tin cherries is all that's available to you. Um, tin cherries come usually in a syrup or a juice. And they're perfect for using in this recipe, please go ahead. But I find that the flavour is just a little bit bland. Um, so I like to use these, and these are actually Italian. So, sorry Germans, I'm kind of going off piece to a different part of Europe um, to get these Amarina cherries, which are sour cherries, and they are in a really tasty syrup. And they're, they're sour, and they've got like the best cherry flavour like ever. And I've used these a few times before, um, not least of which, in this book, which is Bake for Syria, which um, I contributed to last year um, with this recipe, the tahini and sour cherry cupcakes, which is also on my channel. Um, this is a really great book, so as an aside, please go and check this out. It's a book that um, was published to raise money for children that were displaced by the war in Syria, so it's a really great cause and it's got loads of really great recipes, <laughs> including mine. Um, but that's another recipe that you can use um, the amarina cherries in, so if, you know, if you don't want to splash out on a jar and then just have loads of them lying around then there's other things you can do with them but what I'm going to do is make a really sort of loose syrup uh, which I'm going to brush on a sponge using the kish and the syrup so I'm going to be doing one and a half tablespoons of kish to two tablespoons of syrup So just mix that about, um, I'm using a little whisk, but a spoon will do it just fine. I just like any excuse to use my little whisk. Um, and if you want to add more kish or more syrup, then go ahead. It's completely up to you, taste-wise. And if you don't want to use kish at all, if you'd rather have an alcohol-free cake, that's also fine. Um, you can just either use the syrup on its own, or if you're not using these fancy pants cherries, then you can use the juice from the cherry tin, if you're using tin cherries. But I would just add a little bit of sugar and put it on the on, in a pan on the hob for a few minutes just to kind of uh, warm up and make more of a syrup just to reduce a little bit and then use that. But I just love these cherries so much. Mm. Um, so that's looking pretty good. And now we just need to soak our sponges. So I'm using a pastry brush for this so I don't really, really drench them.
I get asked quite a lot whether you can or why don't I um, syrup all my sponges in this way. Um, I know a lot of other bakers do, they sort of dredge their, their sponges liberally with syrup, which is fine. I personally prefer to rely on the recipe to create a moist cake. Um, obviously this is a really significant part of this particular cake uh, and we need to get the booze and the cherry juice in there somehow so this is like a perfect mechanism but I just don't really feel the need to syrup all my cakes because hopefully they're as moist as they're gonna get just naturally but I reckon I have syruped all my sponges sufficiently so that's them taken care of. Um, these just need to cool down completely now, so I'm just going to pop those to one side and clear the decks a bit and then I'm going to make the icing with you. Okay, it's filling time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Black Forest Gatto is traditionally filled with whipped cream, Chantilly cream, or, um, which has often, in most recipes, been stabilised with gelatin and sometimes corn flour and things like that. Uh, I prefer not to use gelatin. I'm going to really switch things up, guys, uh, and go completely untraditional here by putting buttercream inside, which obviously is very, very different. And for the purists out there, by all means, go ahead and get yourself a recipe for the whipped cream filling. Um, but I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to do buttercream <laughs> because I really, really love buttercream. Um, so this is going to be a sour cherry buttercream, obviously. And we're going to use the syrup again from the cherry jar. If you would like to use the kirsch as well or instead of that, by all means do. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with the syrup because it's super tasty. So I'm going to start with 200 grams of soft unsalted butter as per usual. It is squeezably soft, um, which is lovely and whippable. So I've got my hand whisk here and you just need to whisk this for about five minutes until it's really pale and fluffy. Now, if you're unsure at all about what squeezably soft butter is, then I highly recommend you tune in next week for uh, another video that I'm doing, a masterclass on how to get the perfect cupcake, how to bake the perfect cupcake, because I go into some depth about what the perfect consistency of butter is, because um, it, it matters quite a lot in baking, but also it does matter quite a lot in your buttercream. If it's too sloppy, it's just not going to whip up, and if it's too hard, it's going to take forever. So there is a sweet spot, and you can find out that sweet spot more about it next week with the perfect cupcake video. Um, Black Forest Gatto was one of the many suggestions that I received in the previous videos. You guys uh, love to suggest things which is really great. I don't have to think too hard, so thanks. Um, and if you want to see another different kind of cake, uh, it doesn't have to be a classic, but just something that you would really like to bake on a Sunday on a bake along, then pop it in the description box below. My butter is ready, so I'm going to add my icing sugar, and I've got 330 grams of icing sugar. I've already sifted it, and as usual, I like to do my icing sugar beating in two stages. So I'm going to put half in now, give it a good beat. So that's what you should do too. If any of you are going with a whipped cream version, then please let me know how you get on in the comments box below. Or if you have any tips for everyone else on how to stabilise your whipped cream, then also put that in the comments box. I know that the rest of you guys love reading each other's tips, so um, I, always, I also really like reading your tips as well. I can learn a thing or two from you. So I'm going to put the rest of my icing sugar in and beat it all up. And it's going to be quite stiff, but don't worry, we're going to loosen it up with some cherry juice. So obviously I'm going to be using the syrup as mentioned before. If you have made your own syrup with cherry can juice, 
then use that. If you're just using Kirsch and nothing else, then woo, bully for you because that's going to be some strong buttercream. But I really like the way that this um, icing um, tastes, but it also it goes a really nice pink colour, so I win. Now I started with three tablespoons. Uh, feels a little bit stiff, so I'm actually gonna put another tablespoon in. Um, you can also loosen it up a bit with milk if you prefer, um, which makes a really nice silky buttercream, but it's completely up to you. I just want more cherry flavor, so that's what I'm doing this for. I know that I am not really sticking to tradition here, but um, if any of you do have a really great traditional Black Forest Gatto recipe, then please share it down below. Uh, I know that everyone would like to see that. You don't have to do everything like I'm doing it. I'm just one person and a gazillion people that bake this cake, and this is just how I like to do it. So share, 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 everyone. Anyway, I think that is ah, ready. Let's just have a little... Ooh, fluffy McFluff face. So I am going to just cover that with cling film until I need it. These are still a little bit on the warm side. So pause this video and come back, clear the decks, come back when your cakes are completely cool and then we're gonna decorate, woo! Welcome back. Oh, we're on the home stretch, guys, and this is kind of the best bit because it's much, much closer to the time that you can eat the cake. So this is going to be great. So I've got my buttercream. I'm just giving it a little stir because if you let it sit for a bit, it can tend to get some air bubbles in it, and I don't want that. Uh, I want nice, smooth buttercream. And I'm going to put it into a piping bag. I've got one here. It's got a big round nozzle on it, and this is, for people who are wondering, an 804 Ateco. <laughs> this is just like a centimetre wide in diameter. But anyway, in goes my buttercream. So that's ready. I'm just going to use the last dregs um, on my cake stand here, just to stick the first uh, sponge on. Um, waste not want not, guys. So, ooh, I have decided which one of my sponges is the most attractive on the top, and I think it's this middle one. So I'm gonna start with one of the other two on my cake stand. And then, you don't have to pipe this in like I'm doing. You can spread it if you prefer. Um, but I want this to look real pretty. So I'm going to start by um, piping little blobs around the outside, because what I'm going to do is alternate blob and cherry. <laughs> um, so here goes. So as you can see, around the outside, I haven't done them touching my little blobs. I've done them about a couple of millimetres apart from each other. That's just to give me a bit of room for the cherries, but for the rest of it, I think just blobbing it <laughs> to fill the space is absolutely fine. And we'll just put the cherries in where we can. Uh, I just think for the outside, it looks really cool to alternate. And now I'm going to put my cherries on. So I've just drained the amarina cherries from the can, the can, the jar of the delicious syrup. Um, if you are using canned cherries, then they might be a little bit bigger than these. These are really small, so they're kind of just the right height. Um, but if you're using much bigger cherries, I would use halves. And if you're using fresh cherries, then lucky you. Uh, and I would probably also use halves because they tend to be quite fat. Uh, but I'm going to start by doing the outside bits, um, just alternating between my blobs, uh, so that, that way it will show nicely on the outside of the cake. Uh, 
And then once you've done the outside bit, then you can just put as many cherries as you think is appropriate. And that might be just a couple, or that might be absolutely shed loads. It's completely up to you. Um, I'm going to go with somewhere in between. <laughs> a little bit more than is necessary, but not completely shed loads, because these, these particular cherries are super sweet, super strong in flavour, and actually they're super expensive. So, <laughs> got to try and ration them out. So that's one layer done. I'm going to put my second favourite layer on top of that gently. Um, and hopefully the cherries are going to kind of <laughs> support this cake so that it, none of this uh, cream should, uh, buttercream should smush out the sides. Already this looks so fun. Hang on, I think I need to move it over a little bit. Yeah, this is looking really, really fun. So just carry on going with this layer as well. Do exactly the same thing. I am taking my cake to my best friend Marisa's house uh, to give to her mama, who hasn't been very well, so hopefully she'll enjoy this. Uh, what are you guys doing with your cake? Um, assuming you're not eating it all by yourself, which is definitely perfectly acceptable and, you know, reasonable. Um, yeah, what are you doing with yours? Let me know in the comments box below, our favourite box. So that's almost finished and it just looks so lovely. So now with your favourite piece, uh, this is my favourite, um, just because it looks a little bit more even than the rest, that needs to go on top. It can be quite difficult to see when you're not using a turntable if it's level, but I reckon, I reckon we're good. So obviously you decorate your top however you like. I am going to start with um, just a blob of the buttercream, which I'm going to spread out um, just to create a kind of, ooh, hello, a <laughs> kind of sticky layer so that the rest of my decorations will stick. I'm not going to the edge with this. I just want to make a kind of neat-ish circle of icing in the middle of the cake. Uh, and that is going to just neaten up that, because obviously I took the top off that cake. So I'm going to cover that bit up. Um, and then let's go around the outside with my piping bag again and do, I'm going to do the same kind of thing as I've done inside, so blob cherry, blob cherry. And then it's cherry time. Whoa. Sorry, but it has to happen. This is so nice. Anyway, this is looking pretty good. But there's one thing that I really remember from the old Black Forest Gattos from when I was a child. And that is that they had, either on the outside or on the top, loads of shaved chocolate. So I've got some really nice quality chocolate here in a bar. And I'm just going to use my potato peeler um, to shave some nice little curls off that and put it on the top. You can do this with a cheese grater or even just a knife if you want. Um, knives are pretty effective, but they can be a little bit scary. Uh, whatever you feel comfortable with, I just think potato peelers are really handy. Um, and when you've got your pile big enough, um, you then want to put it on your cake. But don't forget that these shavings are really super light, so what happens is that sometimes they kind of float off and go in the, like static makes them go in the opposite direction that you want. So just be careful. I'm going to try and put these on in a bit of a controlled way. So let's see how we get on. Ooh, 
Yeah, I wonder if putting um, chocolate shavings on is to represent the, the, fo the floor of the Black Forest. It looks really like barky. <laughs> anyway, I really like it. I'm not gonna cut into it today though because it is for my friend Marisa and I don't wanna ruin it. Uh, you don't wanna turn up with a gift that's half eaten, guys. That's not very good cake etiquette. But hopefully you all have baked along so you'll have your own to check out on the inside um, and I would like to see it too. So make sure you upload your pictures to Instagram Use the hashtag CupcakeGemmaBake so I can see it. I'll be hanging out on Instagram and here on YouTube today just to answer any of your questions. So if you have any baking related Black Forest queries, then please pop them in the uh, comments box or here or on Instagram and I'll do my best to answer. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed that. I love this cake, so I hope that you do too. Um, I'll be back at the usual time on Thursday next week at 6.30 and this time, as I said before, is gonna be a masterclass on how to bake the perfect cupcake. And I know that I've made a million cupcakes before on YouTube, but this is actually gonna be much more in depth about how to really achieve the perfect sponge. So lots of troubleshooting. You guys ask me questions all the time, like why is my cupcake peaky? Why is it sinking? So we're gonna do all of that and loads of experimenting. So make sure you tune in for that if you love baking cupcakes and you wanna get them just right. So I'll see you then. Bye. Mm -mm. Oh,